Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I'm going to be talking you through all of the books that I would like to read in May. How is it May already? I don't understand. First of all, it's a beautiful spring day, so I'm much, I'm very much looking forward to even more spring and the warmer weather. So I am here in my fabulous new Emma t-shirt in celebration of the wonderful fun that I hope to have in May. Now, if you've been here on my channel for a while, then you know that I set myself a goal of reading one classic and one nonfiction book per month. You'll also know that I am involved in the Bronte Project being run by Marissa at Blatantly Bookish. Plus, there are two other readathons going on this month that I would like to participate in. So that gives me a wide variety to choose from and a very long possible TBR. I have whittled it down to four books that I absolutely have to read to cover all my bases. And then I have two piles behind me of other books that I could choose from if I finish those four books early. So I will start with the four books that I will definitely be reading and then talk you through some of my other potential choices. So firstly, for The Bronte Project, perhaps the easiest book to pin down, we will be reading The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I previously had never read any of Anne Bronte's novels before, but I loved reading Agnes Grey last month, so I'm really looking forward to reading The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. I have heard of it for about nine years now. So I'm finally getting around to reading it, and I know it is the story of a woman who leaves her abusive husband and tries to set up a new life for herself in a new town, and all of the various consequences of that, both positive and negative. It sounds fascinating, and I'm very, very excited to read it. Next, for my nonfiction book for the month, I thought I would give myself something light and easy, as I could be reading quite a bit. So I have chosen Clanlands by Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish, with a foreword by Diana Gabaldon. This is a book that is companion to the show Clanlands, which is, which is showing on Stars currently online, and it is sort of a dovetail show from Outlander, both the show and the book series, in which Sam and Graham, who are both star in the program Outlander, travel around Scotland in a beaten up camper van and discover more about all aspects of Scotland. It's history, it's culture, food, music and dance, sports, everything you can think of. It is a dual perspective non-fiction book, so you are constantly switching between Sam's perspective and Graham's perspective and back again with some rather hilarious consequences. I have been loving the show, I love Scotland, I love the Outlander books, so I am very excited to read this. Next, for the Asian Readathon, which will be happening in May, as May is Asian Heritage Month, I have a variety of books I could choose from, but perhaps the one I am most excited for is Devdas by Sarachandra Chattopadhyay, who is a Bengali author although Bangladesh was still part of India when he wrote this novel. This is a classic novel. It was written in, was it 1917? Yes, it was published in 1917, and it is the basis for the film Dev Das, starring Aishwarya Rai and Shah Rukh Khan, who are two giants of Bollywood. So I'm very excited to watch the film after reading the novel. This novel is very short, but it tells the story of Devdas, who's a young man, and his star-crossed lover, Paro. And he is sent away by his father in the hopes of securing a better life. Meanwhile, she is being pursued in marriage by a very eligible man. And meanwhile, they are trying to be together, but it never works out. And so Devdas is driven further and further into the depths of depression. So it is a tragedy, but I cannot wait to read a classic from Asia, because I have never read any Asian classics before. So I'm very intrigued to see what this one is like. 
Secondly, Katie from Books and Things is running the 1900s to 1950s readathon, in which we should try to read as many books as we can that were written between the 1900 and 1950. So for that, she and I, along with Marissa from Blatantly Bookish, will be reading The Beautiful and the Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Now I talked about this in my April TBR because we had originally set it for April, but then Katie devised this readathon for May, so we decided to push it ahead to May to coincide with the readathon. As I said in that video, I don't know much about this plot. I have read other of F. Scott Fitzgerald's works, so I'm assuming it's going to be in a similar vein to those and that it is probably based at least in part on his own relationship with his wife Zelda. Next, there are all of the books that I could choose from if I finish those four books before the end of May. For the Asian readathon, I also have on deck Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, Broken Verses by Camila Shamsi, which I believe takes place in early 2000s Pakistan, Snowflower and the Secret Fan, which is historical fiction set in China, and lastly, The Hakawati by Rabi Alam Medin. Its setting ranges, but it starts and is mainly set in early 2000s Lebanon. Then, for the 1900s to 1950s readathon, I have a bunch of potential choices, which include The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux, A Room with a View, and indeed The Voyage Out by Virginia Woolf, Rilla of Ingleside by Ellen Montgomery, any of the P.G. Woodhouse novels I have here, Carry On Jeeves and Thank You Jeeves, To the Lighthouse, also by Virginia Woolf, Map and Lucia Volume 1 by E.F. Benson, The Provincial Lady in London by E.M. Delafield, and The Buccaneers by Edith Wharton, which was completed by Marion Mannering. So there you have it. May is going to be a very ambitious month, but hopefully a very enjoyable one. Let me know down below if you have enjoyed any of these books that I've mentioned. D again, don't tell me if you didn't enjoy them because I'd like to form my own opinions. Or if you are also intrigued by any of these books and you'd like me to pick them up a little bit sooner. As always, I'm thrilled to hear from you, but until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.